Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, December 14th, 2020, and today we're going to be talking about the 2020 House elections and why I and many other political pundits and people around the country were very surprised at the election results. Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party went into these House elections assuming that they would pick up seats. The Democratic Party had not lost seats in a presidential election year since 2004, so looking at the 2020 House elections came as a bit of a shock especially since that on the presidential level, Joe Biden actually won the election. I mean, that's not too surprising. I don't know why I'm saying actually, but he won the election. And he flipped five states from 2016. And in 2016, even when Donald Trump had what seemingly was a Republican wave across all of the swing states, the Democratic Party still gained seats. They elected two new Democratic senators to the United States Senate, a net gain of two. On top of that, the Democratic Party elected six new House of Representatives members. So, Six new representatives, two new senators, but this election, sure, the Democratic Party gained one Senate seat, but they did not gain a single House seat, and it was one of the worst showings I've seen for the Democratic Party in the House of Representatives uh, in quite some time now. Now, you could argue 2010 was bad, but expectations were very high for Democrats. I think in 2010, the Democratic Party was expected to lose, and the Republican Party did very, very well in 2010, but this election... There were so many things that were saying the Democratic Party should be performing well on the House level. And even with a Joe Biden victory, the Democratic Party didn't pick up a single Republican incumbent seat, meaning they did not defeat a single Republican incumbent. Whether or not it was an open seat due to redistricting or just an open seat is a different story. But every single toss up race, and I mean that very literally, every single toss up race, not an, over, not an over exaggeration, every single toss up race went to the Republican Party. So, Let's look at our House results. This is actually the uh, Cook Political Report page, and they actually tell us the popular vote margin, which was 3.1%, 3.1% in favor of the Democratic Party. Sure, they won the popular vote. They retained the House of Representatives, but look at that majority, 222, when the majority number needed is 218. That is a four-seat majority. Not only does this show that the Democratic Party did not expand their majority or even have a very solid majority, this gives a lot of power to the squad. This gives a lot of power to the more leftward wing and the more conservative wing of the Democratic Party. Because if those representatives choose not to vote for something, it's a done deal. They no longer have the possibility of the Democratic Party just relying on 225 safe votes. Now, they only have around maybe 215 at this point. So looking at the actual House results uh, way back, you know, not even here. Sorry, let's go to 2018. Seems like a long time ago, even though it really wasn't. The Democratic Party gained 40 seats. They put the Republicans from in the majority down to 199. This popular vote margin, and don't use the New York Times for this, actually, they stopped updating after a certain point. I know it says May 15th, 2019, but they stopped updating their vote totals. The vote totals ended up with the Democratic Party winning the popular vote in the House of Representatives by 8.6%. Do you remember the number I just mentioned? 3.1%. 8.6% compared to 3.1%. That is a 5.5% decrease in terms of the vote share for Democrats. Look at it. It's not just that the Democrats lost, but also the Republicans gained. It wasn't as if this vote share was lost to third-party candidates or independent candidates, whoever it might be. This vote share was lost from the Democrats to the Republicans. So in 2018, this was a very good year for the Democratic Party. You can't say that it wasn't. Looking at all of the Dem-favored races, they won all of them. In terms of the Republican-favored races, they won two of them. And in terms of the toss-up races, well, look how many were won by Democrats. A very significant portion were won by the Democratic Party. And also, not only were there states that were uh, districts that went for the Democratic Party in the toss up column, and of course the Democratic favored column, and also the Republican favored column, but also a very surprising few races. Uh, over here in the Oklahoma's 5th district, if we can get to it, the Democratic Party won. That was very surprising. This was supposed to be a safe, safe seat for the, Demo uh, for the Republican Party. Up here in California's 21st district, 50 50, but the Democrats won. This was supposed to be a safe district. There was not a single portion in the entirety of the safe Democratic column where the Republicans won, nor was there a single district in the Democrats expected to win narrowly column that the Republicans won. Democrats won more toss-up seats than Republicans. But this election, opposite. Let's take a look at this toss-up column. Like I said, not a single district 
Not a single district won by the Democratic Party in the toss-up column. Not one. That is very, very bad. You can't draw in, in any other way. And in terms of the Republicans expected to win narrowly column, do you see a single Democratic victory? No, not one. Do you look at the Republicans expected to win easily column? Do you see a single Repub Democratic victory? Not, not one. There's a runoff election in Louisiana's fifth. But I mean, scrolling through, not one. But for the Democrats, they didn't suffer too many losses uh, in terms of their expected to win easily districts and narrowly win. But they did lose seats. And it's very similar to what happened to the Republicans back in 2018. The Republicans picked up four seats in the Democrats expected to win narrowly column. Actually, sorry, five seats. They picked up five seats and then they won a total of seven. But like I said, none in the safe column. The Democrats did flip these two seats. If you're wondering why there were such large margins, it's because North Carolina was forced to redistrict. So these uh, districts were pushed to the Democratic Party because they did not have fair representation, which is why they're so solid. It wasn't as if this was a Democratic wave in North Carolina. It was just redistricting. But taking a look at these flips, the Democratic Party only flipped one seat, and that's Georgia 7th. They have only flipped one seat, and they weren't even running against an incumbent. So looking at the results, the Democratic Party flipped a total of three seats, um, all of these you know, open races, but the Republican Party flipped 13 seats, a net gain of 10. 10. That is very, very high in a year that was expected to go to the Democrats. And if I need to show you, you know, why this was such a shock. Well, in 2018, the House forecast got things spot on. Look at the average gain for the Democrats, plus 39. The result, plus 40. That was, you know, spot on. The expected majority was supposed to be sometime around here, you know, 234, 233, 235. It ended up being higher than that, uh, you know. But looking at the map now, or sorry, the forecast now, the Democratic Party was expected to do much better in this election. Like I had said, Every election since 2004, the Democratic Party had done better in the House of Representatives uh, in the presidential election year. It just comes as a result of higher turnout. In this election, we saw exceptionally high turnout, the highest turnout we've seen in over 100 years. And many people were expecting this to benefit the Democratic Party. The general rule of thumb is that when turnout is up, the Democratic Party does better. That's the case for midterm elections and presidential elections. But this election, while the Democratic Party did well in the presidential race, they suffered in the House races. And this scenario where the Democrats were to win 222 seats, was not at all likely. It was a 1% chance of this happening. And it happened. 80% of outcomes had the Democrats with a higher majority. Not even just 80%. 85, 90% of the scenarios in the 2020 House elections had the Democrats at a higher percent. Things went very wrong, very poorly for Democrats in the House elections. And look at some of the margins. Some of these were very winnable races, plus 0.89 plus 0 0.1, plus 3, plus 0 0.01, plus 3, you know, plus 0 0.01. These were exceptionally close races, plus 1, plus 1 1.3 over here. They were very close, plus 1.2. These were winnable races by the Democratic Party. But for whatever reason, it didn't put them over the top. The Democratic Party did win some narrow weight races, 1.3%, 1.4%, uh, but none of them were as narrow as this, you know, these victories by Republicans in some of these districts. Look at this district itself. You know, I'm going to make a video talking about this district and another district because they are exceptionally close. Exceptionally close. Look at the margins. Ten, 12 votes separate Claudia Tenney and, and, and Anthony Bredinzi. I mean, that's insane. In Iowa's second district, we have a tie. You know, very few votes separate these candidates. And right now, the Republicans have the upper edge. And looking at the forecast, this should not have even been discussed. We can go ahead and take a look at those districts individually and talk about what was expected of them. New York's 22nd district, this was expected to be a Democratic victory, 73% chance at victory. If we go over to the state of Iowa, let's go ahead and find it. Well, first of all, Iowa's first district was expected to be, you know, that's the district that uh, was pretty solid back in 2018. It was won by the Democrats, defeating a Republican incumbent, but it flipped. And look at the percent chance that that Republican had it winning there. It was not high at all, a 13% chance. In Iowa's 3rd District, it was supposed to go to the Democrats by 7 points. It didn't. In Iowa's 2nd District, oh, uh, sorry, uh, Iowa's 2nd District, well, we'll get to the 3rd District in just a moment. 2nd District was expected to go by an even larger margin. And as we see now, it didn't. The 2nd District went by uh, over 7 points. So, for whatever reason, we saw, uh, sorry, this is 2018. Um, I don't know why I'm missing it. Um, sorry. 
uh, I'm miss, missing representing. Oh my gosh. I don't know what I just did. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was supposed to be a lot by larger than that. So I don't know what happened with this miscalculation in terms of the house forecast. It threw me for a loop. It threw a lot of us for a loop and the democratic party definitely is going to try to see what they can do for the future because this election result was to put it plainly embarrassing. Let's take a look at the swing from 2016 in terms of the presidential race. A lot of boo, right? Well, compared to 2018, which I get was a Democratic wave year. I'm not trying to say that this year should have been a lot better, but history has told us that the Democratic Party should have improved. In fact, they should not have significantly saw a decrease in terms of their popular vote share this large. Six points, especially compared to Joe Biden's performance. I'm very surprised that this didn't translate to down ballot victories. It could have been that some of these Biden voters wanted to check on President Biden. A lot of people expected Biden to win this election and in turn possibly could have voted for a Republican to serve as a check on a President Biden. But that's a lot of speculation. We don't know for sure. And honestly, it could just come down to the fact that the Republican Party had a better ground game this election. Uh, whether that's due to the fact that they weren't as afraid of COVID-19 as the Democratic Party, that's a discussion for another day. But the fact remains, the Republican Party gained seats in the House races while Donald Trump lost the election. So look at all of that blue. Let's take a look at the swing from 2018. Red. We see some areas in Georgia. We see some areas in Texas that have gotten bluer. But the main thing is that it's red. And if you don't see a color, if it's black, that just means that there was not uh, an opposition candidate either this election or the previous election. So you really can't compare the swings because if they're not running against someone, they're usually going to get 90 to 100 percent of the vote. But overall, a lot of red, a lot of red air everywhere. I mean, Iowa specifically, we can see here in Iowa's second district, plus 12.3 percent swing. In Iowa's first district, plus 7.7 percent swing. In Iowa's third district, plus 0.8 percent swing. In Iowa's fourth district, plus 21 point swing to the GOP. Hawaii. In Hawaii's second district, this is Tulsi Gabbard's district, 23 point swing. In New Mexico's second, plus nine point swing. You know, everywhere you're looking, no matter what type of state it is, if it's a safe Democratic state, likely Democratic state, Republican state, swing everywhere for the GOP. And it was enough so that the uh, Republican Party benefited from the higher turnout and also to a point where they actually picked up seats against the Democrats. And the generic ballot was wrong. The generic ballot in this election was wrong, as were a lot of the popular vote totals for Joe Biden over Donald Trump. Now, Biden was expected to win the popular vote by eight, nine percent. He won it by five points. The generic ballot was expected to go to the Democratic Party by seven points. They won it by 3.1%. But the problem is we relied on it because it was a very correct standard back in 2018. 2018, the Democratic Party was expected to win the popular vote by 8.7%, according to the generic ballot. They won it by 8.6%. It was spot on. It was perfect. It was to the T. But this election, absolutely not. It was wrong fundamentally flawed. So I don't know what really went wrong. The forecast for the 2020 race was nowhere near as accurate as the forecast for the 2018 race. Maybe the forecasts only work in Democratic wave years. You don't really know. But looking at the 2018 results, the Democratic Party did exceptionally better. But I think it came as a shock to many of us that this many seats were gained for the GOP. I did not expect this. I expected the Democratic Party to gain seats. And I think this could have been a miscalculation of the amount of support we saw for Joe Biden on top of that for down ballot Democrats because of the fact that, uh, you know, Donald Trump may have underperformed a number of Republicans in some of these districts still remains that Donald Trump did receive more votes than Republicans. But Joe Biden received four million more votes than the Democrats did on the uh, House of Representatives election. So we are seeing something very different happen in these House results. Uh, it was very surprising. The Democrats have one of the narrowest majorities. I think this is actually the narrowest majority dating all the way back to early 1900s or actually maybe late 1800s. So very, very narrow majority right now for the Democratic Party. There's one race left to call, uh, two races actually, N uh, New York's 22nd district and Iowa's second district. So seems as if those are within, you know, just a handful of votes, literally a handful of votes, but we've yet to see what actually comes of those. But right now, the Republican Party has a net gain of 10. And even if the Democrats win both of those seats, the net gain still remains at 10 because they are currently held by Democrats. So if anything, the Republican Party is poised to pick up seats because they currently lead and it doesn't seem as if there are any more votes to actually come out that can actually change the outcome of this election. It could be one of the closest elections in United States history, especially in a House election. But overall, the Republican Party is ahead in both races. And unless the Democrats are able to, uh, you know, call for a recount multiple times like Al Franken did, 
know, this probably isn't going to change the outcome of the results. So the Democratic Party at 222 seats in the House, the Republican Party at 211. Overall, very, very big shock. The chances had all been the Democratic Party was going to gain seats, 80% chance between 225 to 254 seats, and then an additional 10% chance on top of that above 254. There was always going to be a possible scenario where the Democrats could be at 222, but it was a 1% chance. It wasn't likely whatsoever, and it came to a shock to pundits, you know, to the media, to Democrats, and even Republicans. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 post-election videos. Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you all later today.